Greetings! It is I, Tendus Narvan Jacobin, Lord Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the various clans and bloodlines of Vampire the Masquerade in the World of Darkness. Well, this is going to be our final visit to Vampire, at least in the foreseeable future. I have one more bloodline for everyone, the Children of Osiris. A bloodline, of course, founded by Osiris. One that flourished more in the 4th and 3rd millennia BC. Now they have the disciplines of Bardo, and then two disciplines from their original parent clan, though originally this was more dominate and potent because of some early connections to the Lysambra. So as I said, they were founded by Osiris in the ancient days, also known as the Resurrected King. They are said not to have existed into the final nights, but there are always rumors of them practicing their strange disciplines. Bardo, in fact, is a discipline that they develop in order to control the beast within them. It is a level, a recompense of humanity in discipline form. They were recruited from various other clans and the caitiff himself, brought in and taught Bardo. The main requirement is, of course, a very high humanity. This meant that very few elders ended up joining with the children. Most of them did not have the humanity requirements. The few that did, did of course come here and were accepted with open arms. They are the rivals, the enemies of the followers of Set. So it was said around 4000 BCE, Osiris was fed up with his existence. He did not want to be embraced. He did not enjoy the call of the beast within him. So he decided to do something about it and journeyed forth. Most rumors say that perhaps he went to India and studied things like Buddhism and Hinduism. And what is said, though, truly, is about a millennia later, he returned and brought with him Bardo, a discipline he had developed over a thousand years. And he brought it to those of his blood and those that be willing to be taught by him. He would only share Bardo with those of high humanity. It was a way for those of the bloodline to retain humanity, to foster the humanity in others around them. And it is said that even at its most potent forms, you could resurrect a vampire, even from final death. The powers of Bardo were ones of more light than darkness. The fact is that because of its nature, because those that learned it, had to have such great connections. They did not teach it to outsiders. You would have to become a member of the children in order to learn it if you were from another clan. But there were many clans who looked down on Bardo. Bardo was seen as being this taint of humanity. Most vampires fought to keep a semblance of humanity, but not to truly be human. And it seemed like those that truly embraced this were trying to be human. Now, as I said, they were great rivals with the followers of Set. Osiris and Set would do battle constantly. Great wars and battles, defeats. At one of the battles, Set managed to defeat Osiris and cut off each of his limbs, spread him to the four corners of Egypt. Isis, one of his followers, traveled far and wide, gathering up his limbs, and in a special ceremony using Bardo caused Osiris to be reborn. But this rebirth was not without a cost. Osiris could no longer embrace. And so he changed the way his bloodline worked. No longer would they embrace, just as he could no longer. Now instead they would bring in others, teach them their ways, make them children through taught and word, rather than direct blood. No longer would Others be forced to become children. He would bring those who are downtrodden, lost, separated from their clans, bring them in to join them. Now in the second millennia, it is said that he retreated to the underworld. He disappeared from the living world. And the sixth great maelstrom drove him out to the real world, where he used a special spell of life to bring life to his most devout followers. They became human. They were granted access to become one of the undying types of mortals, another 
term similar to a mummy. Now, this wasn't for all his followers. Some saw this light and were killed. But regardless if this truly happened or not, it is said that this modern knight, now, they are an extinct clan. Though, you can always find rumors of secret groups practicing bardos somewhere. Now, they believe in almost Egyptian lore and legend to a fault, and oftentimes model some of their own beliefs and society after that. They do restrain themselves greatly from embracing. Embracing is something that could occur, but is generally generally forbidden. It is thought that Bardo, and through its study, is a way for you to resist the urge to embrace another. Now, of course, as I've said, they do recruit from other clans, mostly those that are on the outside, those that have been shoved to the side, they've been sort of become outsiders, outcasts, Cadiff are a major group that they recruit from. They always look to those that have a high humanity and recruit them into their numbers in order to grow them, rather than embrace. When it comes to places that they will haven, they will come look for places of mythical power, mysterious power. Mystical locations where they form community havens, known as temples, where groups of them live in. It is a location that they learn Bardo from, where they practice and develop it. There is said to have been the Grand Temple in Nepal, and the leader of that Grand Temple, the Undying King, his consort, the daughter of Isis. So you can see the connections to Egypt even now. And of course, beyond there, they had a very hierarchical structure of those as they had learned and developed Bardo, being greater in the hierarchy of the group. Now, we must talk about the elephant with the room, which is the bloodline itself. This bloodline was established in first edition when Vampire was still being developed. It was sort of as the good guys of the entire world. But the thing is, it doesn't necessarily fit within the themes of the darkness and dread of World of Darkness. So when it came to second edition, they were almost beginning to be phased out. We saw very little information on them in the vampire books. The most places they were mentioned were with mummies because of the connections they had to them to a degree. When it came to revised, they're virtually forgotten. Now, this means they've effectively been removed almost from the canon to a degree. Not that we haven't seen mentions of it in V20 because of the one image I show here was from V20. So we have seen in the new 20th anniversary a return to a degree, but they are also seen as being extinct in modern day as a way of having them exist, but having them have gone extinct long ago before the Dark Ages, before any age that most players would see to play in. Granted, doesn't mean that you don't have to have them extinct in your world. You could have had many different storylines. Stick with the storyline for them regaining their humanity. But they are good guys in a world of darkness. And, of course, that's it for today. So, we talked about the Children of Osiris. A bloodline that is, well, removed, in a way. From the canon. They still are there, in a way. Talked about, mentioned, but not something that you're encouraged to play. Vampire the Masquerade is not for good guys. Never really is. No matter how good you are. That darkness, that beast, it's always deep inside. Well, in the next episode, we're going to start talking about another World of Darkness game. I'm going to leave it as a surprise for you to be back here next week when we'll have both Werewolf once again and a new World of Darkness world setting that we can talk about. I hope you've enjoyed my Vampire series. Thank you everyone who stuck it out throughout all of this. If there is more material for Vampire people want to see in the future, I can maybe revisit it for some more videos later on down the road. But for now, I hope you're having a great day and... Until the next time, I bid you farewell.